now and also for later. <coughs> Let me know when, when you want me to begin. Let's all just meditate for a minute. Okay. I'm going to verify the stream is working. We are live. <laughs> We're going to talk today on the topic of the power of thought. I would like to start with just a short one minute. Closing your eyes and uh, just observe your breath. The connection to be able to rule and control your mind and thought is is when you connect with your breath. So just observe your breath, concentrate on it. Take a deep breath in and exhale. And breathe in. And breathe out. What also you can do is Close one nostril and breathe in, hold, and then you breathe out from the other nostril. And you breathe from that other nostril, hold. And breathe out from the other nostril. This simple exercise shows you how you can embody, go deep into your consciousness and you are able to tap into something that's beyond your thoughts, the way to control your mind is when you learn how to breathe consciously. Today I'm gonna talk about how thoughts manifest into reality and how everything works. Thoughts, those are living beings. They are real, real beings in a mental plane. So in order for us to manifest into lower levels, into the matter, we need to have bridges. We need a bridge to bring it from up into the lower region, into the matter. And the bridge, the first bridge is the emotions, energy and emotion. That's our feelings, our heart. So first, usually we get ideas that are spark from the spirit. Spirit is beyond our thought. This is like the Plato's world of ideas. 
we need the soul. The soul is the intermediary, it's like the instrument of the spirit. So the soul is bringing information from the spirit and we are able to understand it. And then if we want to take it to the next level down, we need to really engage our emotions. And then when something is alive, then it will go and start connecting with the more fluid ethereal planes, which is the matter is dense energy, very dense. And in order to be able to influence that, you need to really concentrate your thought for a while, like, like a magnifying glass. And what happens when we put a magnifying glass on a piece of surface? It concentrates the sunlight into one point and it starts burning. So this is the same thing we can do with our thoughts. If we really concentrate in a powerful way uh, in one place, then we'll be able to do a lot of powerful manifestations. So it's very important is concentration and focus. So one of the best practices to train your focus and concentration is meditation at the sunrise. You really get absorbed and connect with the sun in a very powerful way. And that sun is actually bringing you a lot of energy, uh, which is in the form of inspiration, in for, in, in, in the form. it will give you some ideas, uh, thoughts, and also give you a lot of vital energy in a very powerful way. So, so this is when you connect with the sun. So, in terms of uh, uh, let me give you some examples so it will be easier. Let's say somebody wants to move a piece of, let's say there is a pen on, on the table and they want to try to use their thought. Do you think that's possible? For most people that is not possible. And some people were were able to create many, many, many years of practice. That's not a very good use of, of the, that practice, but it's possible that they create an invisible fluid hand and they have put a lot of energy into that. So they can imagine that that fluid hand is picking up that pen or a piece of sugar or whatever it is, and they move it. So they can do that with their thoughts, but it's much easier if we use our hands because we are using our thought. So another thing, in order to manifest the thought into matter, uh, we need bridges. So our hands in this world is like a bridge, like we can move one object to another place. So if the thought was not alive, nothing would have happened, right? So basically our thoughts in order to manifest, they need bridges, so they need our hands be able to move certain things. Also, that's not going to happen if you don't have actually the emotion, the, the, the impulse to actually want to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to be doing anything if you don't have the passion. Uh, you can have a nice thought and it just goes from one to the other and then just pass the thought. But if you want to manifest something, you need to be excited about it. And then the more you're excited, the more it, that emotion is interacting with the real matter and then, then it becomes more real and it eventually happens. <coughs> so, focus is very, very important in order to be able to achieve some manifestations. Another thing is um, let me see which, which one I want to cover. There are so many different things. Just a second. Okay. 
So another one that I want to talk about is meditation. What is meditation? Meditation can be concentrating our thought on a on a beautiful thought. Let's say it can be a, a thought like God is love, and then you just penetrate, and then you just feel how that what what brings you in. The the most powerful meditation can always have is to concentrate on the God himself. That's like the most expensive, but you want to start with something that's easy in the beginning. Something that's, it can be a flower, it can be something that's real, and then you can keep your focus on. And after a while, when you get easier, then you can go to more abstract thoughts and ideas rather. <coughs> so, let's say we have an idea, what is wisdom or love or justice, or we can just think about different ideas and, and penetrate in that. And then you'll be able to get access to some powerful information. Also, to connect to the spiritual world, we need prayer. When you pray, you're connecting to higher realms, divine entities, and they start kind of living within you, and then they give you an inspiration. So, in a way, many times we, we are concentrated thoughts ourselves, like our body. We, at one point, we were a thought in, in, in the Creator, in the mind of the Creator. So. We are concentrated thought. Uh, everything that we see, even let's say fruits or or animals, I think they are all thoughts as well. Uh, but it takes time to to from that intelligence that created it to, to to become into matter. It takes time, so you need to have patience and you need to have a clear idea. And many times we pray for something, but if we are, if it's not good for us, it's not going to manifest. So we have to know that when something doesn't happen uh, right away, that means probably it's not good for us at that moment. It, sometimes we need a little bit more patience and it may happen down the road. But also it's important what we pray has to be so it's for the benefit of all and the benefit it's not only for you, but also for the benefit of everybody around you. So when we pray, we want to be something not, not selfish, but something that's going to affect in a positive way everybody. So what is the will of God? When we were saying a formula, remember, which means in the fulfillment of the will of God is the power of the human soul. When we, have the, when we are one with the will of God, then we have the whole universe supporting us. And what is the will of God? I recently read a quote from the Master that he was saying that will of God is basically expanding your human potential in the most powerful way. The, the, I, you, you reach your highest human potential. So the more you reach your highest human potential, the more you're, you're fulfilling the will of God. So that's our personal development. God wants us to always expand and, and be more and more and more. Because He is like through, He's living our lives through us in a way. Because He's in you, He's in me, we're all part of it. We're just seeing it's kind of seeing itself from different set of eyes. And your eyes, my eyes, everybody's eyes. He's seeing that, but we are one ultimately. So, so how can you harm somebody if, if you're one with that? So when you realize that component, that's a powerful thing. Boris, um, a lot of uh, religions say uh, uh, the airplane crashed because it was the will of God. <clears throat> uh, 
I, I like your explanation much better. What do you say to people that think those kind of thoughts? Well, uh, this is similar to when somebody dies from cancer. That was the will of God. Everybody comes with a mission for a certain amount of time. And in that point of time, <clears throat> they need to expand their gifts as much as they can. And if, let's say, there's a plane crash, you know, uh, there's some lesson that uh, everybody else around them will, will be learning through their life because they're not there anymore in, in physical body, but they are still in the spirit. So our goal in our life is to, as much as we can, to gather spiritual values, spiritual uh, assets, because we can take that with us afterwards. No matter how much money, how many houses, how many cars you have, you can all leave it here, it doesn't matter. But if you work on your personal improvement, and to an entire life, then that makes all the difference. Because in this moment of time, when you leave the body, you take everything with you. So it's worth all your work. And um, if, if those people, let me just turn this off. Uh, if those people, 11, 11, <laughs> angels say, uh, if those people, that were on that plane, if they have done good work up to this point, they will transition in a good way. So that was their time. So, and sometimes there are things that happen for a reason. And sometimes I'm not sure if it always everything like to the very second predestined, you know, we still have free will. So when we have a free will, what that means, uh, we can still change things. Uh, not every, the major things are, I would say, we need to learn certain lessons. We come here to learn certain lessons. But there is uh, one big piece uh, that we want to be, uh, let me get out my toes for a moment. So we're here, our mission here is, is to raise our level of frequency and thoughts to the highest possible that we can achieve on this material plane. And we basically can do a very powerful meditation. It is with the breath. I want to share that with you because it's super powerful. You're basically bringing in the light from the farthest parts of the universe into a single dot in, into your heart. And then when you breathe out, you send that light to the edges of the universe as you breathe out. So you become one with the cosmic breath. So that will expand your consciousness in a very, very powerful way. So you breathe in all that light into your heart and you're going to expand out and breathe out all that light into the edges of the universe. You breathe in and you breathe out. It's like the periphery of the universe. It's like there's a huge circle that has no periphery. It's huge. You 
reach the farthest points. When I had this meditation, when I was 19 years old, I felt like something unlocked in a big way through that meditation. That's why I wanted to share with you. And then I can ask any question I have in my mind. I would just get the answer, just like a download, and I can just write it out. So, just practice that meditation more often. And you can practice that any time. You can be just breathing and just feel how the universe goes into your heart. Goes into your heart. All that light. And then you breathe out all that light. The edges of the universe. Also have consciousness. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. There was a story of a scientist that has hooked up a special uh, machine to a, a plant. And he was doing some experiments when people go and they are planning to break a branch of it, the plant will start reacting like very strong. And if somebody is going to a plant but has no intention of harming it, the plant is absolutely calm, no problem. But there was one day when somebody called uh, the scientist that his wife was in the emergency room. So he had to leave right away and he forgot to turn on the machine. Guess what? When he was going towards the hospital, he got himself into an accident. And later on, when he came back a few days later into the office and he saw that the uh, machine was still running, he saw exactly the same minute when he had the accident. And that was like 10, 15 miles away from the office, the plant reacted very strongly. So the plant was really connected to his energy. So that means we are all connected with everything. Plants, animals, people. We are all one. We are all one. So how we think our thoughts, like when we create a beautiful thoughts, or like when we think beautiful thoughts, we actually affecting the creation of beautiful flowers, beautiful plants. We are actually helping that. But when we have negative thoughts, we are <laughs> creating negative, like a not so pretty. Uh, like some vicious plants or vicious, uh, stingy, uh, or, yeah, some things that are not that very good. So with our minds, we have responsibility what we create in the world, even though it doesn't seem like you have created it, but you're contributing. So it's not only what you do with, with your actions, but what you do with your mind, that's the main, main responsibility that we need is to, to be able to control. It's not like a rushing like a horse that has no, no control over it. Our mind many times, are you controlling the mind or the mind controls you? Is, is, is the thoughts going like one after another or you say, I am the master. That's why we do meditation. meditation and now we observe and then you know, I want to do this. It's not going to control me. So when they teach the horse, when it's a wild horse, in the beginning, the horse is not listening, but eventually you, you teach it, and then it can take you anywhere you want. Uh, and But in the beginning, it's a wild horse, and just takes you wherever he wants. <laughs> it's not where you want. <laughs> so who is in control? So our goal is to master our thoughts, and how you do that is through meditation and the breathing exercise. That's why I wanted to start the, the talk with the breathing exercise, because in the moment you start doing the alternative breathing and different techniques, all of a sudden you embody and then you start controlling the mind, calming the mind. This is the only thing that we control in our body from the parasympathetic nervous system is the breath. And when we 
start controlling the breath, we actually can calm the whole system and we can actually affect the mind in a big way. Also, what we eat also affects how we think and how, how things are. So it's, first thing is, is what we eat, uh, concentrating with the sun, how we, uh, how we, uh, do we do enough meditation in terms of be able to, to observe and control our thoughts and then be able to have a, also not a reactive mind, but have a little space between the thoughts, have more gaps. The more gaps you have, you have more time to react. Uh, if, you have, if somebody tells you something, let's say you're an idiot, you don't have to react. You can just be calm and you know if you're, you know, if you're not an idiot, you just respond in a calm way. But if you're reactive mind, you just respond in a way that's not that great. So it's, it's that gap that we are training to create more gap between the thoughts. That's, that's the goal when we do meditation. It's like a like space of no thoughts. And to do that is, is through, through uh, the breath, the breath and meditation. There are many different guided meditations, but the first step is to really calm, uh, relax the body and then be able to, to do those things. So, okay, again, we have spiritual world, spirit works, gives the idea, sends it through the soul, into our minds, and then a thought comes in. In order to gather thoughts that are in similar frequencies, if we do a powerful prayer, then we will be able to resonate on a higher vibration and then we're kind of tuning to the heavenly station. When you tune to a heavenly station, you're going to be getting good messages and they're all connected ideas to that. So all of a sudden you're like on a whole new level and everything automatically like you're in a different reality. But if you lose your frequency for, for certain reasons, there are many different reasons you can get that, and you lower your vibration, all of a sudden you're in a different place. So you want to raise your vibration again. It can be a prayer, it can be a song, it can be uh, something like, it can be even essential oil that can really boost your system for a moment. Uh, but it's very important to be aware. Also, Carl Jung is saying, we, the mastery becomes when we are aware of the unconscious, when the unconscious becomes conscious, because mm -hmm. we're running a lot of patterns unconsciously. That are, ruined, that are either helping us or not helping us. But the moment you're aware about those patterns and you catch them, then you're aware of what's happening and you have a chance to change it. And the moment you change, you break that pattern. And you do change a few times, you, you create a new, new pattern and then there's the liberation happens. Then finally you have the liberation. So first of all, you have to acknowledge there is a, a, a certain pattern be aware about it, and then when you catch it, then you can change it. So, but this is by basically understanding our blind spots, the unconscious. And we can do that by just observing our thoughts. And you can just do another exercise by writing, just whatever comes into your mind, you write it. And then you can like make, create a, a mapping of all your thoughts, like your patterns. And then you can see if your patterns are positive or negative. Then you can examine as an external viewer, do I like what I see or maybe I can change that or I can go into a, something that's how that serves me. Because every thought creates a certain amount of feeling. If I think somebody is going to harm me, I'm going to create a feeling in me that that's dangerous and I'm going to be, you know, it's something that's not positive. But if I know somebody is beneficiary to me, you love them, and so it becomes, it creates different feeling, you know. So certain thoughts create different feelings, and what Buddha said: thoughts create certain feelings, feelings create actions, and actions create habits, and habits create life, like your destiny, your your life. So, but everything starts with a thought. So if we learn how to, to control the thoughts 
and direct them in the proper way and learn how to focus on a positive thought that we want to achieve and concentrate it like a, like a magnifying glass, then we will really be able to make a huge difference for everybody. Because when we, when we see something in somebody, that means we have it. We have it. it whether it's good or bad. And if we don't like something in somebody, that means we need to work in ourselves to clear it out, because we have it. And that will help them as well, because we're all one. <laughs> so, the more we work on that, we are helping the collective. And you cannot change anybody. You cannot change anybody. The only way, and the only one that you can change is one person, and that's you. And you can change other people by example. You can be what can be the perfect example, and if they're inspired, they'll change themselves. You cannot change them, but you can only change them by your example. So uh, that's all connected to the thought processes because if you know how to control your thoughts, you can change certain patterns and you can change your habits, life, and so on. So it's all connected. Let me see uh, on this CD something. Okay, another one. That's really powerful. Reaching for the unattainable. So, what is the the best meditation? I kind of mentioned that I want to go a little deeper. The best meditation is to go so vast and something that you know that you can never achieve in this lifetime. But your goal and your high, ideal to be that big that you can never achieve it in one or two lifetimes. And that will bring you up and it will be able to help you to go super high, even though you, you know you're never going to reach it, but that will pull your soul in a very, very powerful way. So you don't want to bring something that's very attainable or very short because that's not much of a challenge. You want to bring the highest possible ideal. And our souls, they always evolve to infinity. Basically, the, the spirit is the goal of the spirit is eternity. And the goal of the soul is infinity. So that's why we say a soul as vast as the universe. And we have a soul as vast. Because when we leave our bodies, literally our soul becomes as vast as the universe when we leave the body. And we and may we have a mind as bright as the sun. When we have light in our mind, that's concentrated sunlight will be able to really with that bright mind there's no darkness so you can otherwise you bump into different things if you don't see but if you have light you see everything and you can just go your way without any problems so our goal is to bring more light into our into our minds and how even the, the master says that one day we will be able to illuminate with our minds that they will be so bright that like like a little sun you know the the saints they have that halo you can see that uh saint germain see here that, that yellow uh light around it and on the saints they always have that light because they really have minds as bright as the sun so this is a powerful uh, act to work on our minds Hearts as pure as a crystal. That's another powerful one. To be pure, pure heart. And then you can love unconditionally like the sun. And of course, the last component is a will as powerful. May we have a will, one with God and powerful as God. So our will becomes one with God. That's the ultimate truth. There is like a, a very good graph that usually shows that 
the lower nature and the higher nature, so it's like three different one, two, three, and one, two, three, and then in the begin in the middle is like a so we have the body, we have the lower nature of the feelings that are like the ego, and then we have the uh, the intellect, but that's the ego intellect, and then the ego intellect responds to a buddhic, which is the wisdom. The lower feeling they respond to a divine love, which is the conditional love, and the lower nature, uh, which is like the the will that is only what's in for me. We go to serve, be one with God, God's will, and then you, you when you align those three to be your control, then you become the ultimate. So our goal is to have a mind that is aligned and illuminated. We want to have a will as powerful as God and one with God. And you want to have a heart that is open and, and unconditional love, regardless of what race, what social status. No, everybody is the same. You're not, you're not higher, not lower. You're the same with everybody. So this is like the goals that we need to pursue. And there's way more things. When we create some thoughts in our in reality, uh, in, in the mental plane, they become instant reality there. Some mediums, they'll be able to see them right away. If somebody is under hypnosis and I tell them you can smell a rose, smells the rose because he is under hypnosis for him, he is already feeling it. If I tell him, give him a glass of water and tell him this is brandy and we drink this brandy i'm gonna get drunk when he drinks that water he really gets drunk but that's what happens that means he's feeling that uh, because he's on the mental plane he feels that he gets drunk on that plane and for his for him this is real reality so in that regard the power of thought it instantly manifests but if you want to really manifest in the real world, it needs to go through the feelings, emotions, energy in motion. And, and sometimes you need to keep doing more focus. But there's also another component that if you're praying for something that I, I said that it's not aligned with the highest and best good for everybody, it may not happen because not the best for you. So if something doesn't happen, don't keep going it's just you have to one two three if it doesn't work and it's okay it just it has to move to a different direction and if, if you're not getting it that means there's there's something behind it there's the reason why you're not getting it you need to clear certain things in order to get it okay um, how are we doing with time good we're doing good I have a question about yes. how panurythmy um, helps create uh, thoughts and uh, positive realities. Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So, panurythmy is an amazing method for transformation, and each movement represents an idea. It's like an embodiment of certain thoughts. So, for instance, there is the idea of awakening. So this is the idea of you need to awaken to something beyond you and you need to awaken to an idea for the universe as something way beyond you and you can be part and one with it. So when you awaken to that reality, this is that idea and all the movements in, in panorhythmy, they are taken from nature. So if they're taken from nature, that means they're in synchrony with nature. And when you have that idea that expresses it in a very easy way, you're embodying that idea in that moment when you're dancing it with the music and, and you're doing it. So it's basically given the path of evolution for the human soul when you do the pain rhythm in a, like a condensed version. It's like the key to the teaching of the master. So he is giving like all the different steps, even if you just take the first 10 movements that we did today in Pan Rhythm, there is certain order. You cannot do one thing before the other. 
that you need to awaken first, then you need to reconcile with everybody. You cannot give before you reconcile. There is no way you can give anything from the heart if you haven't reconciled first with everybody. You have to reconcile also with yourself. Many people don't reconcile. They, they, they hate themselves to be with, with their skin. And, and also they have not reconciled with the superior power of God. So, there's like three levels you need to reconcile before you can start giving from the heart. And there is one after another after another that builds on, on top of the other and then you reach the flying, which is the flying into the light. You know, the, the world of thoughts and the world of the spirit. And you come, you go back to where you came. So, in a short version, Penny Rhythm is, is like the, the microcosm, the, the our steps of evolution in, in, a, in a spiritual. Like, this is the, the first 28 exercises in Penny Rhythm. They are more like, I would say, the, the material plane, if we take it, take it big. Then, the second level. A penny with me is the sun rays, which is the soul. The sun rays will bring the heaven on earth. And then the third level is the pentagram, which is the spirit. Like there is, we're talking about the five principles. There I can just talk like only half hour only for the pentagram. We're talking from from uh, goodness to truth, justice, love, wisdom, and then again then we have the, the five qualities. But there's also symbology for, for, each, uh, for each part. There's like, you start with, um, you're more aggressive in the beginning, then you learn the lesson that you don't need to use aggression, then you learn certain things, and then you go to the different paths until you get inside of the initiate, like the highest initiations and the highest tests, and then you really get the closest possible to that. So it's like a big, one to another to another, like like your matryoshki, it's not like in Angliski, those dolls that go inside each other and then you go deeper and deeper and deeper until you get to like the, the highest levels. But there's like evolution. So Panyurithmi, when you really learn it, it's a very powerful method to transform certain things, certain problems. It, it works on the mind, for the thought, it works on the, the with the words and, and in the beautiful nature on the emotions. It works physically, you can, if you repeat enough times, it actually is a good workout. And actually there's like six preparatory exercises for the legs, and not only legs, that they get your legs really strong before you start the panorhythmy. So you can have a full workout just doing the panorhythmy for one hour, uh, on the physical, mental, and all that. Um, what would be the inner part of the pentagram? What are the uh, the inner initiations? The, uh, the... I have to uh, get uh, I, that can be a separate separate talk where I can get the the map and I can explain each one what it is and all, all that. I'm not gonna go right now, but it's a it's a very it can be a good half hour. I have a whole book about each one what it means and all that. So we can do a separate talk on just on the pentagram. It's a it's a pretty powerful one. Um, let me see. I wanted to say a few other things. I just have to um, remember what I want to say. Um, okay. There are some other interesting relations. Thoughts. They are like the air, and feelings. They are like the our bloodstream, like like our you know the blood in, in our body. So you have the air and water, or the nerves is the thoughts, the nervous system, and then you have the that's the thoughts, and then you have the uh, the blood is is like the water, the the emotions. So Omran was giving like really good uh, examples of how everything is, is working. You know, we have the, the brain, it's like the, the spirit <laughs> that controls, sends the, 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 the thoughts, and then from there you, you go into the, 
emotions, uh, which is like taking it to the next level. And it's all different relations to better understand how everything is structured. Like if you have an egg, the outer shell is the body and then the, um, the protein, you know, uh, is, is like the soul, you know, the, the emotional body and then inside is like the yolk and the yolk is like the spirit, you know, you know the, so there's like one, two, three. Apple has also that uh, layers. The trunk also has outer inside and then there's the, the, the different currents. So if you think about it, everything is, has three ways. It has three different um, layers, in, but you have to be able to see them in different parts of, of the world. And the same thing is thoughts, emotions, and then act and will. It, you're not going to act until emotions are, are involved. Because if you're not, if you just think that that's a great idea, but you, you know emotions are not, not involved, you're not going to do anything. It's just nothing going to happen. It's just going to be nothing. But the more, the more emotions you put in, you get excited about it, then it will manifest much quicker because the emotions, they can work much, much better with the one level down to the, to the matter. So when you learn how to do those things, you'll be able to do from thoughts to emotions to this, and then you get much quicker results if you need to manifest certain things. But of course, if it's in uh, accordance with the divine plan, if it's all the conditions are met, then it will happen much quicker. If, uh, it's not for the, the best of all, well, it may, may not happen. So it's always, you're, you should ask for that, to be in, uh, for the highest good of all, if anything. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me, and I, I'll think what else I want to share. There's plenty of things. Horace, could you expand on the um, the will of God and how the Master described um, what the will of God for the human being? Uh, I think I said it. I'll, I'll try to go into more elaborate on that. So I read it recently in a quote because I was always wondering, how do I know what the will of God is? You know, that's usually the intuition. You know, intuition, that's the voice of God. When you act upon your intuition, every time you act upon your intuition, you're closer to the will of God. But you have to learn how to listen, because that's a voice that's very subtle. It's not boastful, it's not like, oh, I have to do this, this and that. It always takes uh, everybody's agenda. I mean, it's good for everybody, whatever that prompt is. That's one, one thing about it. Uh, and, and the will of God, that I was telling you is basically to be able to reach your highest potential when you expand your the highest possible human potential that's the time when you're doing the will of God so that's our uh, ultimate uh, mission is to ex keep expanding expanding and serve with our gifts the others that's the will of God uh, beautiful explanation. I love that. Yeah. So for me, when I read it for a person, wow, that's really great, <laughs> you know. Um, but definitely, you, you can do if it goes in silence. There will be some ideas that will come up, and you can feel it here. And if it feels right in this area, that means you go for it. If it doesn't feel, we, we, our body is very intelligent. Before we make a decision, even if our mind is saying, oh, this looks really good, but you, you feel that we are feeling here that you should not be doing, you should not be doing it. Because then you understand why you should not do it. Because this one is connected to, basically, it knows everything, the universe and everything. 
your mind is limited, it's just a tool <laughs> that tries logically to figure out how you, to protect you. <laughs> but it's not that, we have to be the masters of it and you know when to listen to it and when not. And have to, we have to use it as a, as a good tool, uh, but it should not let this one control us. You know? So intuition, listening to intuition is very, very big. And many people still use their minds more than the intuition. Uh, and it's important to start le learning. I'll give you another example. Deepak Chopra has interviewed one of the CEOs for Sony or something, like a very big corporation. And he was always making the best deals. The best deals, always. Said, How can you do that? He said, every time you didn't feel right here in the good feeling, I would cancel out the deal. Even if it was making amazing. And sometimes when it was looking like here up here was not making any sense, but it was feeling right here, I was going for it and it was tremendous success. So and he was super successful, this guy, like millions of dollars he made. But because he was listening to his intuition. So the idea is to to really go inside and and hear that silent voice and what feels right. And we always have that uh, in, inside, inside, in this area here. We, we can feel if something feels right or not right. And we just have to think about, we not think about it, we have to feel it. And then, okay, this is right or not. If anybody online would like to ask a question, you can type. We have uh, six or seven people online okay. watching on the live stream. Sure also, some. anybody else would like to ask a question about the will of God or the power of thoughts, which is uh, of course this topic? Now, there is a psychic pollution, so we have to be very careful not to create psychic pollution, you know, with our thoughts and influence. Because many times, I remember uh, one talk, uh, Omram was saying that uh, somebody in some remote area, kill somebody. But they ask him later, what, what prompted you? What, so just something like really made me do it. But he says that many times those people were affected, it could be somebody on the other side of the earth having some really powerful negative thoughts and that guy got it and he, he did it. So basically with our thoughts, even though we don't do anything with our own physical, you know, we're not affecting anybody, not punching anybody, but I'm really sending some powerful negative energy about somebody, we are affecting many parts of the world and somebody may act on it. So what I'm asking is the power of thought is really powerful because you have to be watching your thoughts, whether even if, if you're not, this is responsibility for, for our thoughts because this creates some bad <laughs> forms, uh, some diseases and things. And when we create beautiful thoughts, we're supporting more beautiful aromatic flowers and beautiful things to show up in the world. So our thoughts are very important and how we, how we, uh, we, uh, we manage them. The master also gave some formulas, affirmations that you many. can use to control your thoughts, right? Yeah, there, there are many different affirmations that you can use. Um, I'm just looking for a second. So creative prayer is another powerful one. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are There is some rules of spiritual work. Also, the power of now, I want to share a little bit. This is from Eckhart Tolle. 
when we live in the now, you have the ultimate power to create amazing things. You don't have to worry about the future because if you're living really well now, your future will take care of itself. Most of the people, they either thinking about the past or thinking about the future. They're never in the now. Even when they eat, they are always thinking about the next bite. They are not really in the present moment of the current bite. So it's very important to be mindful of everything you do in your like have your entire life, like a living meditation. Like you're washing dishes, or you're doing the floor, you're doing all the computer work, or whatever you're doing, you're 100% present to what you're currently doing. So that's a big one. If you're doing that in your mind, in your emotion, your act is doing all those three things, uh, one thing, but all those three components, the mind, the, the emotion and the will is all in one, you're not losing any energy. I remember that from my kiddo. You never lose energy. If, if you're, your mind is thinking one way and you're doing something else and you're dispersing so much energy, you're depleting yourself very, very fast. So it's important not to do multitasking and and you have to be 100% aligned with what you're doing in that particular moment. Then you go to the next and then go to the next and go to the next. But one thing at a time and always worry about the day. No, don't worry about post 10 years from now or tomorrow. The tomorrow will take care of its tomorrow. Just do the best you can today. And if you think about it, the past always happens in the now. <laughs> And the future will be happening in the now. But most of the people never left, lived in the now. <laughs> it's a paradox. So it's important to be mindful and aware and be aware of what your thoughts are. And don't identify necessarily with your thoughts because your thoughts, those are like different beings that you were able to attract depending on your frequency. And they come and go. So you're not really your thoughts. And your emotions, they change depending on your thoughts. So everything is changing, but our goal is to keep tuning to the highest possible frequency. So that's basically the synthesis of my talk is I want to make sure your aim is to always get the highest possible vibration and frequency so you can align with the highest possible thoughts because they're connected. Those thoughts of high caliber they have friends with other good thoughts. And if you stay in that realm, nobody can touch you. I'll give you another example. Somebody tells you something bad about you, but if you go up in the light that they cannot touch you, they're gonna get all the repercussion, the, the divine justice will, will back slash into them whatever they send you. So they're gonna feel the effects, you're not gonna feel anything. You'll be like high up, they're not gonna touch you. So that's why it's important the frequency to keep high. So you're invincible to any low vibration people or whatever they tell you. This is you're untouchable. And also use the love as a weapon, as, as a shield. So when you send love and you high, get your high frequency, you know how it works? Like attracts like. And anything that's outside, it reposes. So if you have a super high uh, frequency of light and I mean the darkness will be reposed directly from you because you, you it just doesn't match you and like a track if you're lower level you're gonna track more low low level things so you want to keep up and then you track higher level I have a funny story I want to share yeah it's a story about this um, man who went up to this master and India, this guru, and he was very angry, and he yelled and yelled at the master, called him every bad word. And um, the master just stood there and didn't had no expression, just stood there, and, and then the man finally got tired and left. And later, um, the disciples came up and said, why did you allow that man to, you know, why didn't you say anything back to that man or anything? And uh, the Master, the guru said, if somebody offers you a present and you don't accept it, who does the present, who has the present still? <laughs> and so he didn't accept the information, he didn't react, he didn't, so, so the, the energy stayed with the man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, 
in a lot of ways, we are learning to master our emotions mm -hmm. and our feelings. And but in order to master the behavior. emotions, you, you master your thoughts because the, the thoughts create the emotions. The emotions they don't create by themselves. They are created by certain thought. If I have a positive thought, that will create positive emotions. If I have negative thought, I'll have negative emotions. Depending on how I see you, I'll, I'll give an example. That's what Wayne Dara was saying. When you change the way you see things, the things you see change. <laughs> and I'll give you an example. A friend of mine. He used to take care of somebody really good. And the, the daughter and the son didn't like that the, the, the lady that he was taking care of, he was giving me some, some, some gifts and some other things. They, they thought he, he's uh, uh, doing this so, so he can take something from, from, the, from their mother. But that was not the case. He was really giving all his best. He was doing the best massages and so on. So they had very negative attention towards him. But later on, when she passed away, for a while they, they, they had very negative, but then realized that actually he was doing a lot of good things for uh, their mother. And also they changed, and then also they see him like the best person. So, so their thought process changed. And the moment they changed, their feelings were very positive. They were giving him cards and thanking him. They give him like $2,000, like a Christmas gift card or whatever. So what it is, is like one person, if you see it in a certain way, it can be very like creating bad emotions for you. So you're trying to, uh, you know, avoid them. But the moment you change the way you see them, all of a sudden they become a different person and you can hold different relationship you can have with them. Looks like we have a question. Yeah. Let me read it. Sure. From Anelia. Oh. <laughs> uh, that was a powerful example about thought pollution. Uh -huh. How can we learn to direct our thoughts in productive, not destructive ways? Okay. Productive ways. What is productive way, first of all? Productive way is something that we will, we will be able to, to produce a positive result, right? And how are we going to produce positive results? When we align and concentrate on a positive thought. Uh, if somebody gives you a negative thought, you don't have to accept it, right? And you can counterbalance with something that serves you better. So. In order to achieve productivity or, or create something that's positive, you need to keep keep that idea always. Uh, uh, it can be like a little tennis match in your mind sometimes. If you have, let's say, some idea that you're not fully believing, but you need to switch. So in, in the beginning, it will require some willpower, but you, ultimately you'll be able to to change it, and then you're going to create that positive result, if you keep the positive one. So that's what I feel it should be. <laughs> Any input is okay with anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Question? Okay, I have some more. Oh. You keep talking to pause the power of yes. thoughts and importance and control and so on. Uh, and I've heard the similar ideas from other mothers. But I want to mention, I've met some people who are very emotional dominant individuals. Mm -hmm. They seem like they react emotionally first and then their thoughts kick in and they make stuff up <laughs> to match their emotions. Literally. It just doesn't make any sense, but it matches their emotional reaction, so that's the truth. Uh, and uh, That's a reactive mind that creates a very fast emotion. No, mind. I think it's a reactive emotional body that controls the mind. It's just, uh, you got to point out, there are some exceptions to every rule. And uh, 
But you can still bring it back to the thoughts. You know, if your thoughts are going off because of your emotions, you can notice that. And in an effort to control thoughts, you'll also end up noticing your emotions and control the emotions. So, whatever, it's still tapping into the divine mind. Mm -hmm. and oh, so, yeah. does, is there anything in Mikhail's teaching about reactive emotions independent of the mental body? Well, I'm not very familiar with that particular one that you're okay. mentioning. For me, always has that, even though it's a millisecond, mm -hmm. it always mind is first, then emotion, then there is action. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just becomes very quick. So your mind cannot uh, listen to two conversations at the same time. It can switch very fast, mm -hmm. but can never be only on one. Also, what I wanted to mention that I forgot to say is our minds cannot understand the, the no part. If I say, don't eat chocolate, your mind is thinking of eating chocolate. If I, when I was taking, talking about positive, if I say, don't lie to me, you're thinking, am I actually programming it for you to lie to me? Because there's no such thing as don't lie, there's only lie. But I can say, tell me the truth. So when I say, tell me the truth, that's the positive affirmation. Or if I say, don't fall, that's not very good. You can say, walk straight. So, so, then, uh, so, so there is like the, the positive affirmation is very important how you say things in order to get the right reaction and the right, uh, you know, each thought will create certain feeling. You have to think of any idea that, that I can just say, it will create certain feeling in you. And some people go very quickly uh, that there is, becomes like an unconscious thought that creates that emotion and then they react. It's like a pattern that is already in their system and it happens so fast that you don't even realize uh, that it, it did that. But it's so quick. It's like literally mind, unconscious, and then there's the reaction. But if you learn how to do more meditation and you, s you slow down and then create the like the space between the thoughts and the reaction, then you can react in a different way maybe. And then you change and break that pattern. So I would suggest to those people that are with that problem with very quick emotional reaction is to spend time in meditation and, and just create more space between uh, whatever happens to them. If the phone rings, it doesn't need necessarily that you have to right away uh, answer it. You have a choice always. Many people don't realize that we have a choice all the time. And many choices all the time. Every single second we have choices. And when you do, don't do something, it's a choice too. <laughs> when you don't do something. Or when you do something, it's a choice too. Like I'm amazed so many people that I'm helping people.